All right, we are back, Black Tea. We're going to go ahead and get right into it. Our reading for the day, Naturally Beautiful, and we are in Chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11 is titled, A Brief Analysis of the Women in the Life of Jesus. I have so much um, highlighted in my chapters, but whoever wants to go ahead and jump right in, feel free to do so. So I'll just start by um, making a quick comment. Um, the first thing that stood out to me uh, in the first paragraph when I started reading it is a question that Sister Dr. Ava posed, which is, is um, her referring to Mary Magdalene? I hope I said it right. Um, it's her role in the role of, um, I'm sorry, the role of other, the other three Marys, the, no, 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 the prototype. That is Mary Magdalene, the prototype of the black woman in America. So that stood out to me because one, honestly, I'm, I, I didn't know who she was prior to reading this. Um, I didn't know who she was. So just for that question to be posed, I'm like, wow, I need to do a lot more studying and reading of the Bible because if that type of question is posed, is she the prototype? It's like, okay, I need to, first of all, I need to look into this woman's life a little bit more. So. That's what I had to say about that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I took notes on this chapter, and I don't know where my notes are. But um, one thing, just reading the entire chapter, it reminded me of the importance of really studying the the women of God and the women who were in the life of Jesus. Um. And particularly in this time, it makes me think about the women who are surrounding the minister daily. Um, and it also makes me wonder who were the women surrounding the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Because the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was also on the run. So were there any women with him? Because I know he wasn't with his family because his, some of his children didn't get to meet them, get, didn't get to meet their father. Um, until later in life. So um, like the age of seven for, for an example. So it just makes me wonder who was around the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And then today it makes me look at particularly Sister Naima and makes me think about, um, I forgot, Sister Amina. I, I forgot her name right now. I'm um, the honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan assistant. It just makes me think about the people surrounding him, even the, from the cook, just everyone um, and their significance. And I'm not saying their significance in terms of what they're doing, but um, in terms of like, for an example, Sister Naima being the national MDT captain. I mean, what is Sister Naima doing for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? We know that she's helping bring more women into the nation of Islam and help to um, train them but what is she actually doing and what is the, um, what is, like, what would be, even though I know that we're the, we're supposed to be a reflection of Mary, but you get what I'm saying? Like, what is actually her role in the deeper significance of that? And so that's, that's something that it had me reflecting on. Um, and just like, also individually just had me thinking on it but I don't really have much to say because to me the chapter is so deep and it's it's just like when I read it the first time you know years ago I don't think I had this same thought that I have now especially with reading um the women in the bible book and that's that's like a book that I'm realizing I need to read over and over again because there's so much that just comes up. Yes, ma'am, that is um, so true. This is, is very, very deep, significant. I think I think about, um, when we think about the women, I think about what role am I playing for the minister, you know, in this walk? of Islam and the nation of Islam knowing who the minister is. And I think about how important my role is um, in, 
in my everyday activities, just being able to talk to somebody and talk to them about the teachings and about the minister. Um, that's important as well. But I do, I constantly think about, you know, what is my role and my purpose for the minister, especially during this time now. And then I found it interesting how um, it, it accused Mary Magdalene of being a prostitute and she wasn't even a prostitute. So it just made her, just took away, almost like they was trying to take away her power of who she really was as a woman and how important she was to society. Because Minister Ava even mentioned that she was an entrepreneur. She had money. You know, she was a wealthy woman. So I thought that was interesting how um, they tried to make her be um, less than a woman of her time when she really was not um, seen as, a, well, she wasn't that, but that's how they viewed her and saw her. But again, this, this, this chapter 11 is very powerful. Did you all have anything else to go on <laughs> to talk about with this chapter? I would just mention that speaking on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, um, my question to like, who's the women with him? Because on page 86, it reads, so there was a significant number of females with Jesus in his travels. And I think that that's significant. Um, so that that's a question that I'm going to raise and see if I can get any, any answers for that. And then one thing that we were talking about a few weeks ago, um, I don't know if anyone wants to add from it, but I just want to point out again, a woman's hair is her crowning glory. And so with Mary using her hair to wipe the feet of, of the Savior, it's like, like what, what is the true significance of that? Um, I, I still don't know. Um, I'm actually, what I'm going to do, um, because I didn't do this when we were talking about it, I'm actually going to look it up on the final call and see if I can find anything. But did you two um, find anything from our last conversation? You said about, I'm sorry. About Mary using her hair to wipe the oh, Savior. Oh, no, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, um... I was reading Closing the Gap, but I have to look and make sure that the minister uh, said that there were six women and one um, male with him. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's in Closing the Gap. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, ma'am. Anything else for you, Sister? What I wanted to add, I, I didn't look more into, um, into it in terms of um, trying to figure out why she did that. But on page 88, it says uh, the first pair, I mean, the first sentence in the last paragraph, in order to understand what was going on here, we need to know more about this ointment. And that's what stood out to me because I was thinking about it um, and we, we discussed it because that part kind of had me a little baffled. I'm like, why would, why would a woman take her hair and just you know, wipe a man's feet, but specifically with oil, um, why would she do that? And then the type of oil that she used, because they mentioned the oil being really expensive and um, all of that stuff. So I was trying to find the oil. <laughs> I wanted to find the oil. Um, I didn't find it, but maybe it's under a different name now. But um, I was wondering if, if they meant that in a literal sense, like did she literally take her hair and rub his feet with oil? So I don't know if that's um, symbolic for something. Well, obviously it is, but yeah, that's what I was more so trying to figure out, like the oil, the significance of the oil, and if she actually, you know, got down on her knees and rubbed her hair with oil on his feet. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that part possibly being allegorical. Um, I took it as literal. So that's, that's also a good question. Anything else for this? Yes. Anything else for this segment? Not it's a for, lot in this chapter. It, it, this one's um. I think this chapter I'm gonna have to read it several times. Like I, this 
this chapter just kind of has me a little bit um, stuck. I need to understand this a little bit more. So I don't have anything. I'm sorry, one minute. <laughs> I know I'll say um, the honorable on page, the last page in the, the chapter 93, it says um, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that the secret of God lies in the one man. This means that the true knowledge of God and the true knowledge of self cannot be understood without the one man, the female, the second self of God coming from the divine word of God and giving birth to a new world civilization and kingdom of peace with unlimited progress, freedom, justice, and equality for all, the respect of gender. Yes, ma'am. That quote also stood out to me, but then I also was looking at the one above it because speaking on, you know, all children being born from a woman but then she gets, or not she, but the minister, these are all quotes from the minister, right? Mm -hmm. um, these are all statements from Mother Tanetta. Um, and Mother Tanetta raises the point about um, particularly a man that he, um, she says they were all born of a woman and were raised taught by their mothers, which is the very nature of children in relationship to their mothers until they mature and take hold to the responsibilities of their manhood and godhood. And it just makes me think too that a man can't really be a man until he learns to respect and honor women, especially his mother. Um, so that that's one thing that stood out to me in that statement, but it's our job as women to raise um, young men to respect and value the woman. Um, and not just their mother, but, you know, all women. And so that's something that, that I had me think about. But if there's nothing else, it's the faith you could take us into court and alive. Actually, okay, I, I caught the last part of what y'all said. Um, but this was a question that really, um, a while ago I was on Facebook and a brother uh, posted a comment about how can a black man not respect um black women when his mother is black or something along the lines of that and it just made me think about how a lot of our sisters you know so we know how a lot of our sisters are especially prior to coming into the nation and i honestly can see i'm sorry Zaid, stop it please i can see how um how there's like no respect there because we you know got to a point where we weren't respecting ourselves so how like that has to be learned um by having a different perspective of the woman of the mother and it's it reminds me of brother tony uh, well formerly known as brother tony uh brother brother abdul malik saeed muhammad praise be to him i'm so proud of him but um what? when he uh was talking about his mom one day at the mosque and how he had to learn how to respect her and look at her in a different way because of how he was raised so i just think that like once we come into that knowledge it is our responsibility because i don't know what brothers have to deal with um with trying to learn to respect their mothers or what battle like the battle that they have to go through when it comes to that but going forward, because we do know that and knowing that 75% of the work is with the woman, like for me, I internalize that and I'm like, okay, I know I have to be a certain way so that my son, inshallah, will not have those uh, type of struggles and be disrespectful towards women because of how I am towards him or how I was toward him, um, you know, when he's older. So I just wanted to add that. Um, that made me think, Sister Faith, about my cousin and I'm not sure if this was before the nation, but he said, I'm not marrying no black woman because look at my mom and my sister. And he he was saying basically because they got attitude. And I was like, every woman can have an attitude. <laughs> I was like, have you ever considered what your mom and your sister been through? And I was like, regardless, um, any woman, like I said, any woman can have an attitude, but have you... Um, taken into consideration the love of black women like have you 
seen another side of a black woman? I and mean, have you seen another side of your mom and another side of your sister that you could love and respect and honor them? So I think too, we just have to, um, and I started talking to him about himself because at the end of the day, it's not just that he doesn't respect black women. That's him subconsciously not knowing that he's also saying that he don't like black people, even though he black. Because if you saying you don't like the black woman, you don't want to marry a black woman, there's something very off about your love for yourself. So um, I think we also have to teach a deeper love for yourself, a deeper love for the indigenous and original people and um, the value of who we are while also hitting home to everything we've been through because the reason why we are <laughs> the way we are is because things we've been through. But um, let's get into Courtney a lot. Yes, ma'am. So this question um, is from last week when Sister Judith uh, mentioned that Reverend Rawls gave his Bible um, to the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But I wanted to ask both of you, both of you, um, what did you all think was the significance of him saying that the children, uh, like for the parents to not bring their children into the church because he didn't want the children or the parents didn't want the children to hear what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad had to say? Me? No. <laughs> I think the significance in that is the power of the children's minds. Um, especially when you could see the reaction of Sister Judith when she was already having a conversation with her teacher, and then she is like, Oh, I gotta hear this because I was just talking about this. And then she goes and get the information and she gets not only what she went in there for, but then she started learning about pork and her mom is trying to combat what she's saying. She's like, hold up, who told you to go in there? And I think it's because older people are sometimes stuck in their way. So whatever the father said at the dinner table, he doesn't believe like we believe. So I think the significance is in there saying, we go on there with a certain belief. I'm going to listen to what he's saying, but it don't matter because at the end of the day, he can't change me. I'm just going to hear what he got to say. And a lot of times, that's how older people think. Not to say that some older people are not going to come into the nation of Islam and accept the truth, but that's how most of them are. And that's why the ministers talks about going after the youth because they're con we're constantly thinking like, and, and where it's not an age thing, those who are looking for truth, like they have a youthful mind. And so like they're constantly trying, they're aware and they're in present time and constantly seeking God. And so I think um, also what it was going to do was produce in children um, the rebellion to what their parents were teaching because now they have got a new understanding and that's what happened with Sister Judith. <laughs> We're not supposed to eat swine <laughs> flesh. And so, uh, and then what happened? She got a whooping. And so she had to keep, I'm sure she had to keep eating swine flesh because she said when her husband, not at the time, but they weren't, you know, married, but he called her savage. She said that she, at the time, she was still eating swine flesh. So she had to let go of at that moment in her life of what she heard from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, unfortunately. So I think that's for what I got out of it. Yeah, I, I, I got the same thing as you because um, children are gonna ask questions. If they hear, if you told them something and they hear something different, now they wanna know, well, why are they saying that when you told me this? And, um, and they think different from us. Isn't that what she said he said? Was that the line? They don't believe like us. They don't believe like us. So when Sister Judith, when she heard that, she was, that even sparked, you know, curiosity. Well, if they don't believe like us, then how do they believe? So I think that um, that was the, for me, that was the significance of them not wanting the children to be there because that's a um a group that you can influence easily mm -hmm. you know change their mind real quick about what you're saying especially with the truth because the truth hits differently 
Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to add this real quick. Um, I'm thinking about it now because I know normally when parents say things like that, uh, they think that, or they're, they're trying to protect their child or children against something that they think is wrong. And in this instance, I think that um, they were like essentially trying to protect their children because what they thought the most, other, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was gonna say was wrong. And knowing that he taught or teaches us that the white man, you know, is the devil and things like that. A lot of parents, I, I personally believe that they didn't want their children to think that one, they were going to school with white people. Um, they have white teachers and things like that. So to shift their mind in that type of way, like our people learn how to survive and they didn't want their children to, to potentially be killed because of what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was saying. Because I think at that, at that time, um, like I know for me when I first came in and I heard the white man was the devil it was like roots all over again and every time I saw a white person I was just like super angry and I had to grow into my understanding of that and I think that at that time you know when you hear that and they were living in a time where you know it was like you know it was really bad worse than what we see now so I think that it was more so of them trying to protect the children and um not necessarily get them to be harmed in any type of way so just go along to get along but that's all I want to add yes ma'am is there anything else on that not for me yeah but I think it's definitely something important for us to pay attention to and what that means for today um but as we continue to reflect on sister judith's um sharing with us some of her experiences um the one of the questions that i wanted to pose is well it's the only question <laughs> how do you court how do you court a lot god being focused on the clean garment the new start that a lot has given us rather than our past So I'll, um, that was something when Sister Judith said that we have a new garment, we have a, a white garment, when she put it, when she gave me that visual, I just looked at that so differently. I'm like, wow, I never really looked at it that way. And uh, I don't think my garment is as white as it was when I came in because <laughs> I've done some things that I'm not proud of um, since accepting the teachings. But after she, um, after she said that, it made me think about like, okay, well, how can I move forward and not necessarily focus on focus on my past anymore and not be bound to certain things that I used to do or certain ways that I used to, um, certain ways that I used to think. And so to answer your question, the way I look at it now is like a lot has given me another opportunity to live a better life. And he has wiped away, like, now I'm no longer ignorant. So when I, when I do something wrong, it's like, I know that I'm doing something wrong, even though a lot of times when I was doing something wrong, I knew it was wrong, but I still did it anyway. But now it's like, okay, I know this is wrong. There's no doubt in my mind that it's wrong, but it's more of a challenge in terms of disciplining myself. It's a mindset. It's, it's all about a mindset. Like I have to um, um, battle certain thoughts and get out of a certain get out of a devilish i guess a devilish mindset or a rebellious mindset so i'm not sure if i'm answering your question but that's just that's how i can answer it right now i hope i'm answering your question <laughs> but that's it can you repeat the question sister Gaston? yes ma'am and, and before i forget sister faith one thing i want to say from your answer is and if y'all see my eyes roaming I have to close out some tabs because the computer froze in. So that's letting y'all know I'm paying attention. But um, Sister Faith, I think we are constantly given a new garment every day we get to live. So I just want to say to you, not even to think about whatever you have done since coming into the nation. And I would not think that your garment is beige or whatever color you got in your mind, red, whatever color you got. Um, because um, Allah makes all things new. 
So every day that we got to live is a new opportunity, it's a new moment. So I just wanted to point that out. The question, Sister Faith, I mean, Sister Larez, is how do you court a lot being focused on the clean garment, the new start a lot has given us rather than your past? That's a good question. I think I think every day I attempt to be a hundred percent positive. Even if I have things going on in my life that I'm not, you know, that I'm dealing with, I'm still like in good spirits and not really down or negative. And I try to um, to give that energy to other people because they might be in a certain mindset, you know, where they're off and they may need, you know, some help or something or just to have a positive something. So that clean garment for me is so very important. And like you said, we... We get the opportunity every day Allah allows us to get up and see another day. Then we have an opportunity to do something right. Instead of, you know, thinking you're doing something wrong, you know, twist that around and say, I have the opportunity to do something right. Even if it's just giving somebody a greeting, a smile, or, um, a compliment, you know, that I think is a part of the clean garment. It's our behavior, it's our thinking, because you can't put on a, a clean garment and be thinking wrong. That garment itself is going to, you know, lift your shoulders up, have you walking with your head up. I remember when, the, I mean, literally, when I first put my garment on, I was so, so proud. And I still feel that way when I put my garment on because it represents that I'm, I'm no longer of the dead and I'm striving to do something different than what I used to do every day. So that's what it means to me. Yes, ma'am. Um, same for me. I really love that Sister Judith shared that because... The, that's what led me to ask her the question about the balance of transparency. Because before the Nation of Islam, and even being in the Nation of Islam, like that's how I live my life, um, like being transparent with people. Um, and there have been times though where I'm like, maybe I shouldn't share that. And I, and I didn't. Um, but it gave me, it reminded me of the clean slate that we were given and that we are given by Master Farah Muhammad. And it may, it makes me be more grateful um, for the clean slate. And a lot of times we sit in there or I'm sitting there not forgiving myself from something that happened years ago and it's like Allah already forgiven me. And Allah shows me that he's already forgiven me for the blessings that he's given me in my life. Um, and on the, the other side of that, my transparency has actually gotten me to better places in my life. So that's why I had to ask that question too, because um, I noticed that when I share my story when I take that like leap of faith of getting outside of myself and just go ahead and just share this, that a lot, um, you notice you get, or for me, I have gotten some rewards for doing that. Um, but in Sister Judith's explanation, some things that I have, that I have considered potentially sharing, I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> so that uh, it, it just gave me a new perspective and it, it truly did give me true balance in it. Um, so I'm, I'm really grateful for the question. And I just wanted to, to ask that, but just 
to really be clear in my how I'm courting a lot in that is um, just really letting a lot know that I'm thankful for getting me through what I got through um, and just asking him to help my mind not get stuck there because even though we can get out of something sometimes our mind can be back there when we like we in a whole new reality so anything else on that oh, yeah sister. that um <clears throat> that uh transparency that you were talking about i had a, a experience with that today i didn't you know go too far into um being transparent but i just wanted to go far enough where it would be understood that you're not alone because I think when you can be honest with people about what you've experienced, because they're literally sharing with you what's going on in their life at the moment, when you can share, when you can share, you know, with them in that experience, I think it makes them feel a little bit better about themselves. Because we have a tendency to be so hard on ourselves, be down on ourselves, and then we get into this cycle and this mindset of always being negative so i think that has to do with us putting on that clean garment like they say you put the clean glass next to the dirty glass well they want to know how you get a clean a clean glass and you can't you know not give them some detail of how this happened and that you can do it too so i understand that transparency part that's beautiful, Sister Lorez. Um, and I, I agree with you. You have, I think we have to, we don't have to go into all the details. <laughs> we, we could just be, you know, straight to the point. Uh, so yes, ma'am. All right. So come on, sis. Right now. So um, this for this one, I actually went back uh, through my notes and something that we discussed in the first uh, podcast. And I wanted to ask this question again to see if we look at it in the same or similar perspective and just where we are with it now. But are you full in your life? That's for come on, sis. Are you full in your life? And however you want to take full. that. There's just the context. Full. What do you mean when you say full? However you want to take it, what is like when you hear that, are you full? What does it mean to you? And are you, are you full? However you want to apply that. I think I'm spiritually full. And that means that um, I've got a better understanding of who I am, a better understanding of um, who a lot God is and how he plays a role in my life and um, I think I'm a fool in that aspect I'm not I mean I'm, I'm happy I'm not um, sad or depressed and I think I'm fooled in the sense where I have I feel like I have something to give someone else if that makes sense. Um, I'm not full. Um, I, same as Sister Larez on the note of I'm not sad or depressed, but I'm not full because I got a I got sprinkles to give to people, but um, I need to be whole and complete. And it's not to say that I can give more than sprinkles because I I'm sure I can, but um. I want more out of life and this is not like a it's not even a place of like ingratitude it's not a place of um uh, again repeating the sadness it's just I know I want more and I know I deserve more and so I'm not full yet my cup is more than halfway full um, but it's not overflowing like it should be. And it's because I know that I could be doing a lot more in my life. So I can't say that I'm full yet because um, 
there ain't abundance flowing yet. <laughs> um, and I'm not reaping what, because I haven't fully sown um, for a lost promise to be fulfilled of good homes, good friendships, and all walks of life, luxury, and you know, all, all of that. Um, but because I need to do some sewing. So for me, um, I think that similar to Sister Destiny, um, I have sprinkles to give, and I honestly think I have a little bit less than sprinkles to give to someone <laughs> because I, I don't feel full in my life. And truly, um, I don't even know if I'm depressed. I'm gonna be totally, I don't know if I'm depressed. I know I'm not happy. I'll say that I know I'm not happy. And um, earlier, um, I mentioned to Sister Lorenz, and it's funny that you mentioned it. You you said that every day I attempt to be 100% positive. And that comes off with like, like I see that this woman is just a positive woman. And that really, I just love your energy. Like every time we speak to you, you just, you on 50, it's just like, <laughs> you just have so much energy. And I feed off that. It's like, man, you know what? I, I want to get to that place of just, you know, what seeing the positive and everything, like no matter what, and just truly just um having, I guess it's having faith and knowing that, you know, whatever a lot wants to happen, that's what's going to happen. Zaye, please stop me. And, um, so um, yeah, that's that's how I can answer that question uh, for myself in terms of being full. I don't, I'm not full, I'm not empty, but at the same time, I can't even say if I'm empty because I'm not happy. So I don't know, but I'm I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on Sister it. Sister Faith, you better not say you empty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but from I, to Chicago and whoop you. <laughs> okay, yes, <laughs> yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Sister Lorenz, go ahead. <laughs> No. I didn't have I didn't I didn't have anything else to say. I I don't know. I guess it's just um levels of where you are in your life at that moment. So me saying, you know, that I'm full, I know that there are other things that I do <laughs> want to do and that I um want for my life so this is the Lorez freeze for you yep okay um well while she's coming back i'll just say oh there she go you back you you're on mute <laughs> you all froze on my end so i don't know do i do i have to repeat <laughs> You do. You said the different levels, and that was all I got. Oh, out. I was saying that there were different levels. Um, so there are other things. Chris you, know, I, you cut out again and just came back. I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> God don't want you to share that He's right not. now. I'll just leave it at that. All praise is due yes, to a lot. I I will say um you're right about this different levels, even though we didn't get to hear all that a lot was putting on you. But, you know, if you decide you want to share, but um, there are different levels to it. Um, and that's why I say I'm not full, but I'm not sad. Um, I just know that a lot wants more for me. And I want to receive. <laughs> what Allah has for me, but I'm not going to receive what Allah has for me until I stop making excuses. My husband, um, my husband and I were reading the Holy Quran a few days ago, um, Surah 75, and I think it was section one or section two. I'm not going to look for it right now, but it was either one of those two sections, but, um, in the ayah, it spoke on, um, making excuses i want us if it's okay after we do self-care or while we're doing self-care i'm gonna look for it because i think that would be a good ayat to close on if that's okay okay that actually fits because um what i have for self-care and um 
Sister Destiny mentioned something to me about uh, who am I a while ago, uh, not not too long ago. It's actually kind of recent. And um, as I was thinking about it, I could write down like certain um, certain words. But even with writing the or titles, I call them titles. Even with them writing down those titles, I didn't say them with confidence. It's like, okay, I'm a mother. Obviously, I, I had a child, um, so I can say that I'm a mom. Oh, or I'm a Muslim, or because I accept it, but things like that. So um, for me, what uh, self care? What I have for self care is um, who are we, or who who are we individually? And can you say that with confidence? And if not, then work on, I think we should work on um, building our confidence and really get into a place of being secure with where we are. I'm probably the only one that's struggling with that because this red, you on point this and I just got to give it to you. But um, yes, ma'am. So that's what I wanted to share for um, self-care uh, is being confident in who we are and knowing who we are and being able to, like I say, express that and share that with confidence. I'm not. I mean, I, I have my my um, struggles with that as well. But I remember, you know, we'd always hear that term, fake it till you make it. Well, I don't want to fake it anymore. I just want to let it be what it is. And if, um, you know, I'll, I'll just give it to you the way it is or the way I am that day. I don't want to, I don't want to fake it you know, fake like I'm happy or fake like I'm, my spirit is good or fake like nothing is going on in my life. I just want to deal with everything as it is on the surface and be able to, to present myself as such because you got to learn how to accept um, you for who you are, especially in that moment. You know, we all going through something. So, um, I just try to keep it positive, keep it 100, keep my mind on, on the law, on studying, on prayer, you know, keep my circle tight, you know, with positivity and not allowing other things to come in into it and, and break it up. Because, you know, even though we have a garden, we still have an individual garden that we have to maintain. So that's what I would say on that. So, um, I think that who we are constantly evolves. So, in this moment, um, I'm going to start with what Sister Larea said, and this just speaks to what I've been saying in our um, two to last two to three episodes before Sister Judith. I am in a place of relearning how to love myself and in a place of, oh, I'm gonna love myself no matter what you got to say about me. <laughs> and no matter if you're not liking the things about me and even when you're criticizing me. So take what you got to say and just know that this is who I am. And we have to be okay with people not liking us. We have to be okay with people not um, liking our growing process because a lot of times that's what they don't like. Um, but we, we gotta be careful with, the, it's always a duality. We gotta be careful of um, people not liking us because if everybody don't like you, then it's a problem with you. But what I'm saying is, if there are people who are noticing a change in you and they they keep saying you change where where is this person where is this old person in you you want me to stay that 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 person like that's not that's not how god made us and that's not how he desires for us to live so um the answer to who am i well, I'm currently on a new assignment that God gave me. And because every time a lot gives you a new assignment, that is a rebirth. That is an opportunity and it's a new garment. <laughs> That's an opportunity for us to 
sit back and let go and just do what Allah is telling you to do. And it wasn't talked about on here. Um, and I think Sister Larissa would be okay with me saying this, but Sister Larissa was talking about praying to Allah, asking for steps. And she was like, and in the middle of it, she, you know, God told her, this is the first step. And so in the in the, every assignment, just do what Allah is telling us to do. And he's going to reveal more of the steps, but not just the steps. He's going to reveal or more who you are. So who am I today? I would just say, um, I can't share right now <laughs> publicly who I am today. Um, but soon I will be able to. And I think that is also significant. Being able to know when God wants you to shut up. Who am I today? I am silently living. <laughs> That's what I would say. I'm silently living. And I'm walking into the assignment that God has given me. And I'm like, oh, well, why are you giving me this assignment right now? <laughs> but look, I'm embracing it. Um, it's teaching me a lot about myself. And it's teaching me how to depend on a lot in myself and that's not easy to do and I, I even mean that humbly with being a wife because you can get caught into being a wife and look always looking to your husband but hold up now there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot my husband to give me my assignment I did get a new assignment when I married my husband um but my husband, he's not all of my assignment. And even that assignment with that I have um, collectively with my husband evolves. So um, that's what I would say in regards to who I am today. I'm silently living in my assignment and I can't reveal who I am just yet <laughs> at this moment. And I think things are constantly... Uh in the assignment is constantly revealed to you what it is that you're supposed to be doing in that assignment. So when I had asked um, a lot to show me the steps and he said, well, this is the first step, but I didn't hear first, I'm thinking number one. <laughs> so of course, you know, I thought about don't um, listen to what I say, listen to how I say it. So that means that just because it's the first don't step. Don't listen to how I say How it, I say what? it. Listen, listen to what I say. So just because it's the first step doesn't mean that's one. Because that first step can have many, many steps to go into it in order for me to reach that goal or that assignment in that part of it that Allah has for me to do. So I had to say, oh, okay, I got it. And then I know it'll be something else that'll come. I'll be like, oh, okay, didn't think about that either. But it's just, and that's when it comes though, uh, Sister Destiny, for me, is when you're silent. When you get that understanding and you can hear that voice talking to you. Sometimes I think people, when you say, well, I told me, they look at you cross-eyed, you know, because now they're trying to figure out if you're telling the truth or if you're lying. <laughs> because you said a lot told you something. Sister Larissa, that's so beautiful. Because it's also what um, the, the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan said. He had one more thing to do. <laughs> but the one more thing does not literally mean one more thing. I have a collective of things for you to do. And all of those collective things are the one. It's a part of the one thing that I need you to do. And um, sometimes we miss that or then we want to give up because we like, well, I did all of this. No, you didn't, my child. <laughs> did you see? It took me to do this, to build all of this. And so that's, that's really key. 
crazy to a lie. Yes, ma'am. Um, going back really quick because I didn't get um, I didn't get something when you all were talking about levels. I know Sister Larez mentioned it first, and then Sister Destiny, you started to expound on it. What was the context of that when you meant um, there are different levels? This is the red little sister destiny with whoever wants I would I was speaking on different you being at different levels in your life. Mm -hmm. So you you have different um experiences. Um because we were talking about being full, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I was just talking about being at different levels in your life you might be full on this level and not full on that level. That's what I was um, uh, talking about. Okay, yes, ma'am. Well, did anyone have anything else to add, Sister Destiny? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say, I can't remember where it says in the Holy Quran, but it, um, it speaks on us being raised in degrees and that is levels. Um, so it's just as when we could look at Sister Judith as an example, she can come here and present what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us, but put it in a mathematical way for us to look deeper into that. That's a degree. And so, um, I would say from outward looking at Sister Judith, that she is full mathematically. That's what I would say. I don't know, Sister Judith. <laughs> but I would say outward looking in, Sister Judith probably would say that um, because she seemed so passionate about it. She said, I thought I was going to get some mathematical questions. She was ready. She was ready to outpour on, on that, on topic. So um, I hope that makes sense. And I can't, unfortunately, I can't remember um, the ayat, but if I find it, I would be happy to share it. May I read um, the resurrection? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so there are only two sections in the resurrection, and the resurrection is Surah 75. And I'm just going to read Surah uh, um, section one because you have to get it in its entirety. Section one, the truth of the resurrection. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Nay, I swear by the day of resurrection. Nay, I swear by the self-accusing spirit. Does man think that we shall not gather his bones? Yeah, we are powerful to make complete his whole make. Nay, man desires to go on doing evil in front of him. He asks, when is the day of resurrection? So when the sight is confused and the moon becomes dark and the sun and the moon are brought together. Men will say on that day, whither to flee? No, there is no refuge. With thy Lord on that day is the place of rest. Man will that day be informed of what he sent before and what he put off. Nay, man is evidence against himself. Though he put up excuses, move not thy tongue therewith to make haste with it. Surely on us rests the collecting of it and reciting of it. Surely on us rests the collecting of it and the reciting of it. I just repeated that twice, excuse me. So when we recite it, follow its recitation. Again on us rests the explaining of it. Nay, but you love the present life. I hope y'all getting all of this because this is what we've been talking about. And neglect the hereafter. Some faces that day will be bright, looking to their Lord, and other faces that day will be gloomy, knowing that a great disaster will be made to befall them, nay, when it comes up to the throat, and it is said, who will ascend with it? And he is sure that it is the parting, and affliction is combined with affliction. To thy Lord on that day is the driving. I'm just gonna say, there's so much in that. There's so much in that. I mean, all of this is what we've been talking about this entire episode. But the one part that I was bringing up earlier on the excuses part, 
Man will that day be informed of what he sent before and what he put off. Nay, man is evidence against himself, though he put up excuses. So um, the question that Sister Faith asks about, um, who am I? Well, surely on us rests the collecting of it and reciting of it. So when we recite it, follow its recitation. So are we reciting our supreme wisdom and believing that's who we are? And in the and in it, it's not just saying recite it, it's it follow its recitation. So be it. So there's a whole lot more in that, but lots for us to think about. So that's all I got to say. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Sister Lorez, did you want to add anything? Thank you, Sister Destiny. That was beautiful too. You said no, ma'am. All righty, well. If that's it, then this I, one more thing, Sister Faith. Oh, Sister oh, Lorenz, I'm, you ready? I'm ready. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Oh, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Yay, praise me to a lot. Thank you. And may Allah bless you with many, many more, Sister Faith. Praise me to a lot. Thank you both so much. Well, appreciate that. Well, this has been another beautiful episode of Black Tea, actually, episode 12. Oh my gosh, we're making progress, y'all. Praise me to a lot. But um, we thank you all for listening, and inshallah, we will have another episode for you all next week. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Mm -hmm.